Everybody, welcome back to another episode of the Music Biz Weekly Podcast. I'm one of your two co-hosts, Michael Branvold, and as always, I'm joined by Jay Gilbert. It's Monday again, right? It is. <laughs> it's, it's a little it's a little nutty, but you know what? I think we're getting into a groove. I think we're all starting to get into a kind of a new normal, new patterns, and, you know, business goes on. You know, the show must go on, right? You no, know, exactly, and, you know, I can... I'm just excited because I've been able to just organize and get so much stuff straight and organized and put together and plans made and, yeah. and, and frankly, lots of proposals going out. Um, you know, there, there's business happening and there's business not happening out there. Let's, yeah. let's be honest. You know, that's right. I think if your business relies on touring, it's not happening. If your no. business relies on a major label, or a bigger indie, it's not happening. If you rely on physical sales, it's not happening. But if your business as an indie artist is just digital releases and your whole world is online, nothing's stopped. Right, right. And for some of these artists that maybe were getting ready to go out on a tour, now it's time for them to stop, pivot, and engage with their audience however that manifests itself there's there's other tactics and other things to do so there's no excuse for just sitting around there's tons of things to do yeah there definitely is um all right so before we get into this week's guest a quick plug for our sponsors and supporters bruce and hypebot um awesome thank you so much for everything you've done to spread the word uh uh bands in town same thing we love it Thank you, thank you, thank you. And of course, discmakers.com. We appreciate it so much. We know it's a digital world, but there's still an important role for physical media for today's independent musician. Digital royalty payments are so small that selling products like CD, vinyl, and T-shirts at gigs are on hold, but you should be selling them online. I was just talking to a client today of like, got to get, get you set up on Bandcamp. You can sell your physical goods directly through Bandcamp. You can put your bundles together. There's no reason to do, not to be selling physical goods right now. Um, for every CD you sell at a gig or online, you would need roughly 3,000 streams to make the same amount of money. And that's a lot of streams. Our friends at Disc Makers are the place to go for your discs and other physical media, including vinyl, USB drives, and even t-shirts. So head over to discmakers.com, place an order for a hundred or more CDs, and when you check out in the promo code, put in free biz, all one word, free biz, and you'll save up to $150 in shipping costs. And with what we are going through right now, saving That's money anywhere, is yeah. how you will get through to the end. So 100 or more CDs, save up to $150 in shipping if you use the promo code FREEBIZ at discmakers.com. So uh, who's our guest? Our our guest today is a great one. We have Dr. Portia Sabin. How official does that sound? She is the new president of the Music Business Association. Yeah, this is a great conversation uh, especially all of the efforts that the Music Biz Association is doing around the crisis, resources they're providing to everybody in the business, not just retailers, right. musicians, retailers, independent contractors, you name it, some incredible yeah. resources that she outlines for us. Yeah. So let it roll. Today we're joined by Portia Sabin. Portia is the president of the Music Business Association, which I am a proud member. Um, she's, uh, formerly, uh, president of, uh, a record label. She's run a management company. She's been involved with, uh, A2IM, who we just recently had on the show, um, among other things. And Portia, the thing that really blows me away that I, this is so amazing, not only all of this stuff, but you've played drums in bands, which is awesome. You've got a PhD from Columbia and you've done stand-up comic comedy. <laughs> wow. Well, I personally have actually never personally done stand-up comedy. I put out a bunch of st stand-up comedians uh, on oh, Kill Rock. Oh, so they weren't yours. 
record label. No, thank God. I, you know, stand-up comedy is probably <laughs> one of the hardest art forms I've ever had the privilege to watch people do well. I can't um, imagine. It's just, it. it's, it's so hard. I can't, I, you know, it, it's really impressive when people do it well. And then when people do it well, they make it look so easy that you don't know. You don't I know realize. it's like so natural when you're like, that's gotta be scripted. And it's like, no, it's not scripted. That's why they're great. <sighs> yeah. It's a different skill set for sure. But you, what, what I love about your background is that you've held your, you know, finger over the flame. I mean, you've been there. So when you're talking to artists, managers, distribution, labels, you've played those roles. You've been in their shoes. So you've got a knowledge base to draw from that not a lot of executives have. Mm. I guess that's, I guess that's true. I'm always really impressed. You know, I always feel like my background didn't prepare me for the hard stuff that I had to do in, that I've had to do in some of my jobs. For example, when I ran a record label for 13 years, it made me really wish I'd gone to get an MBA um, so that I had some business school under my belt. Uh, you know, it kind of, it's funny. It's like, it's good to get experience in certain things, but then it makes you realize what you're missing. Exactly. You know, I really wished I was like a big econ person or something. Yeah. That would help. There was this great quote from Danny Goldberg where he said, you know, when he ran a record label, he's like, what do these managers do all day? And then when he was a manager, he's like, what do these record companies do all day? You know, it's, it's, <laughs> It's interesting to have that perspective, I guess. So you're yeah. fairly new in your role, right? Yes. So yes. how long, how long have you September. been there? I was, okay. Came on in September, so I think it's about eight months now. You figured out where the paper clips are and... Pretty much, uh, yeah. It's, and it's funny because it's May 1st, so if, if things were normal, we would be having a conference for 2,400 people in 10 days. Yeah. So I wouldn't be having this calm conversation with you. <laughs> <laughs> You'd be crawling the walls, right? Yeah, exactly. So, I mean, yeah. that's, I, this whole COVID thing has been about silver linings for me. Yeah. So that's one silver lining, right? Is that yeah. at least we're, we're, we're relatively calm right now, even though we're not doing what we should be doing. Right. And for those watching, it's moved to August and hopefully that will, you know, be good um, yeah. because... This this conference, you know, I've been going to, I think this will be my 18th, maybe. Wow. Um, but I've been going for a while. And what I've watched over the last few years, and I'd love to get your your thoughts on it, is it's it was kind of going downhill, and, and I mean that with all due respect, only because the business was changing. It was going from physical and then yeah. downloads and the people coming, you know, a lot of people lost their jobs and it was a, it was a kind of a strange time, but about four years ago, maybe it started this uh, renaissance, if you will. It, the music business association has embraced, you know, uh, Apple music, Spotify, Deezer, Pandora, so much that they have workshops and they've, but they haven't abandoned, you know, the indie retailers, you know, the Amoebas and, you know, music millenniums of the world. There, it's still a vibrant place where you can speak to anyone in music. And I think that's been, to me, the most exciting part of watching the last few years is this, it's kind of coming back up more people coming better conversations everybody's engaged um is that sort of your you know your plan and is that kind of what you're seeing too well yeah i mean uh the music business association has been around for like 62 years we started in, it was started in 1958 and uh it was originally the retailers association trade association so really it existed for the the independent retail stores and distributors and before that uh the the rack jobbers the people who sold racks into pharmacies and drug stores that you That's would right. put your lp on i mean it was it was i loved when i when i came into this job i i read all about the history and i was really blown away yeah um it's just fun to think of us having a history like that and 
you know, I never thought of a time before record stores. I'm showing my age there. You know, when I was a kid, you'd go to record stores and paw through bins. And I just thought, yeah. oh, this is how it's always been. I had no idea they used to get your records in drug stores. Um, mm-hmm. And as, you know, as we all know in the industry, physical has, you know, taken a steep decline in the face of uh, in the rise of digital. And so I think it was about six or seven years ago that the previous administration decided to pivot uh, the organization to including the DSPs and embracing the um, music industry as it currently exists, which was a great move, obviously. And that's actually when I found out about Music Biz. As a, as a label owner, I had gone to NARM, NARM's conventions for years. And then when it pivoted to Music Biz, I didn't really... I didn't know that happened. Instead, mm-hmm. one day someone was like, hey, you should go to this music biz conference. It's really amazing. And I went online and I looked at it. And I was like, oh, the offerings are amazing. The people who are there are amazing. This is such a great conference. Who are these people? Come from? And it wasn't until I got there and learned about it that I was like, oh, it used to be NARM. This is you know what sprang out of the ashes of NARM. So yeah, they made a great pivot a few years ago and it's grown. So when, when I came on, I think uh, what they really are and what's really special about this organization is it's pretty much the only trade association in the music industry where almost everybody who is involved in the commerce of recorded music can come together and talk about what we all do. So I think that's what makes it a very special place. So And we have all the DSPs on the board. We have you know the majors. We have indies. We have distributors and, and retailers and manufacturers you know we have um a to z media is on our on our board so and and since i've come on we really are making a push now to include other sectors so we have some publishers some managers on our board um and we're seeking to get more people as well because you know i mean today in today's world managers are more important than ever in terms of actually doing the day-to-day business of artists you know, That's in a way that I think probably is pretty unprecedented in the in the industry. Yeah. So yeah. That's where Most we are. of my clients are artist managers and, and you're absolutely right. In a lot of ways they become the new label. They've mm-hmm. they've taken on totally. a lot of roles and responsibilities that you know, some of these labels used to do. One of the things that I like about going to music biz, besides, you know, look, the panels and all of those are are great, but the conversations you have in line for coffee, you know, yeah. are some of the best meetings that I've had there, right? Yeah. And the other thing is you, as as music biz association, it's so good at bringing in these companies like Jaxta and, you know, chart metric and buzz angle. And there's been a lot of discussion lately about metadata and some of those conversations, especially last year, um, all of the companies representing metadata and how we as an industry can kind of get our, you know, stuff together and, really start crediting sidemen and delivering the metadata consistently and being able to search on it when you're in DSPs, if you want to know everybody, you know, uh, or like a music producer, like here are all the things that he worked on, or here's a sideman and here's all the projects he worked on. Those are some of the fascinating things to me. Is there anybody that you can think of off the top of your head, not to put you under, under the spotlight on this, but Any companies this year that you can think of that are coming in that would be really interesting for folks to check out? Definitely. Um, You know, I think you mentioned Jaxta and Jaxta just released Jaxta Pro for free to the whole industry. And that's just so exciting. You know, I've been I've known Jackie for years and, and to watch them come along as a company. You know, that's something that I think we lost when we sort of left behind the crate digging version of our, our ourselves, you know, was having that access to who plays on what. And yet yeah. with the digital age, that's become so much more important because income streams are so fragmented now. The amount of money you're getting from each income stream is tiny. You really need to hang on to it and make sure that you're getting properly credited so that you're collecting these little bits of money that are coming from all over the place instead of just like one check once a quarter yeah. and some touring income. So um, stuff like that's really awesome. So yeah, some of the companies that we have um, gotten on as members and will have at you know Music Biz 2020, if we have it, 
and certainly beyond because we will have music biz again, you know, even if it's not 2020, <laughs> God willing that we are all with us. Um, we have Peloton, we have TikTok, we have, oh, wow. um, yeah, a bunch of these companies that are, are doing exciting things in space. So yeah, that's sort of our, one of our big focuses is to keep our ears to the ground and sort of figure out where the, the industry is heading and yeah. then go talk to those people and say, you know, come into the fold because all of our members are going to want to talk to you and hear from you. Por Portia, are you planning to sort of pivot some of the panels and discussions to focus on, you know, this current situation with the virus and the pandemic and the lockdown and how that's impacted the entire music industry, not just touring? Um you know, what does that mean? What are solutions? Are you are you looking at, you know, let's focus on right now and talk about how we can how we can survive until January? Because, fr I mean, I think we all agree there's a lot of music business that is at risk of not being here by the end of this year. Absolutely. Yeah. So four weeks ago, we started a program called Music Biz Live that has been happening Mondays and Wednesdays. It's a live Zoom. Um, and we've done exactly that. We've gotten thought leaders together from all different aspects of the industry to talk about exactly that. Like, where are we now? What are we doing? Um, in the very first, the very first couple were, we had like Facebook and um, Instagram, Twitch and SoundCloud to talk about their relief efforts, the money that they've donated and the yeah. funds that they set up to help people out. Um, over the last few weeks, we've done um, ones like, for example, last Wednesday, we talked to the head people at, from global trade associations. So from SASM in France and Gamma in Germany and um, in, in, a woman who actually lives in the epicenter of the outbreak in Italy, uh, who is the chair of Impala, uh, a couple of people from the UK and just talked about the European response where they are finding themselves right now. <clears throat> Pardon me. And what we can learn from that. Yeah. Um, and this coming week, we have on um, Monday, we're talking to some mental health experts about mental health at this time and taking yeah. care of yourself and figuring out ways to, you know, Fantastic. keep it together, body and soul. Um, yeah. And then on Wednesday of next week, we're doing one, which is really exciting. It's going to be a data analysis of yeah. uh, the music industry over the last two months. You know, I signed up for COVID. that. You've got some um, great yeah. guests on there, you know, guys like yeah. Bacula and the guy from yeah. Chartmetric, and mm -hmm. that's going to be a really great conversation. Can you yeah. share so that sort of go, go ahead. I'm finish. I'm, that's sort of what our response has been is like, we decided that because that's what music biz has been to the industry, which is a place where people can come together and talk about the important issues that we're all in, you know, impacted by. Um, that this is an important thing for us to do right now. And we're going to keep them going. Awesome. Um, and I do have more, but let me let you finish your question. I was just going to say, can you Michael. share, can you share one or two of the I don't, I don't, findings isn't exactly the right word, but discoveries that have come out of some of these sessions of stuff that people can take away and do something, change something, something that can impact them in the very short term here and, you know, extend their chance of surviving this until we all come out of this, frankly, you know, next year. Right. Well, you know, there's sort of two parts to that. One is, you know, there's some practical information that came out. We did one with a lawyer and a business uh, affairs person talking about how to fill out your PPP applications, how, your small business loan applications. Um, and we have a ton of information that we've put on the musicbiz.org website so people can go there and find information. We've also been really working hard. You know, the retailers are the heart of, you know, our organization. And so we've been really working hard to try to find solutions with them, really trying to point people at the stores and, you know, say buy gift cards, buy, you know, go the record store day that happened that, you know, I bought records on record store day and now they're going to do record store day drops. 
pointing yeah. people at the record store day website to continue to, you know, find the record stores in your area. And then also just keep an eye on, you know, when they open up for curb, curbside again, like make sure you go and patronize them. I mean, we're really trying to push all this information out to people to try to help. Um, the other part of that though is what I'm calling silver linings, which is just weird, but I feel like every conversation we've had, there's been at least one sort of silver lining takeaway, you know, something that's coming out of this that we weren't expecting. And honestly, I'm always blown away every single day by the creativity of people in the music industry at all, in all sectors, not just the artists, but the, you know, everyone who works in the, in the industry, just mm -hmm. the creative problem solving and the new approaches that people are, are doing. I, one of the biggest takeaways, the first takeaway for me was that, that um, the internet is finally doing what the internet was designed to do, which is connect people. And I was like, oh man, that's so true. Wow. And it's so hard for me at my age to think that way because I always think of the internet as like this huge burden, like, oh crap, yeah. now I have to learn how to use Twitch. You know, <laughs> now I have to learn how to use Instagram. Like, oh, oh. it just seems so difficult in, from my perspective. But now it's like, oh my God, this is genuinely providing lifelines for people who are trapped at home and can't go out. So that was like, that's a big takeaway. Yeah. Um, Another one. takeaway that I got from um, from our global conversation was the idea that you know we're gonna we're all talking to our governments in a much more urgent way and we're getting listened to much more closely than we would if things were totally normal and so there may be some long term takeaways from changes that the government puts into effect that might benefit our industry in a, you know, in a real way, like tax credits, for example, for the types of industry, you know, the people who can't get money from a standard way because they don't have employees or they don't have a W-2 or, you know what I mean? There's yeah. so many, you know, when you first looked at the PPP loan application, there were all these things that you had to, these slots you had to fit into. And it's like artists and venues and, and record stores in a lot of cases don't have that information. So, you know, um, some of the changes might actually in the long run benefit our community uh, by just changing things about the basic way we do business, which yeah. could be very helpful. Yeah. You know, there's so many tools to your point that we're using now that some of us maybe didn't use before, but as, as an industry and as like musicians are now, you know, live streaming for pay and for free and they're connecting with their fans in a different way. And, <clears throat> I can't help but think that watching what you're doing with the Music Business Association, like some of these live streams that you're doing, that this isn't just a temporary fix, that I think our industry is going to be forever altered. Because we're not, you know, we're not going to come out of this next Thursday and, okay, everything's back to normal. It's going to be this gradual thing that could last a little bit longer than we think it will. But we're developing all these tools like you're learning, you know, Twitch or, you know, Roblox or whatever it is. Now you've got those weapons in your, in your belt, right, when you go forward. And I think music biz is going to be that way. Do you think that you'll continue to do these these things that you're doing now um, that I'm, I see all these great things on the music business um, website, whether it's, you know, providing resources for people or education for people and also using these tools like we're doing right now, is that going to be wrapped into a part of your plan going forward? Do you think? Definitely. You know, I think the biggest thing about music biz is that we are a membership organization and we need to serve our membership. And so I think this is, you know, one of the silver linings for us is that this is providing us with a great opportunity to serve our members even more importantly and better, you know, because it's great to have a big conference that everybody loves once a year, but you know, then there's the whole rest of, you know, there's 11 more months in the year. What are you going to do for those 11 months? And I think this is really helping us, you know, clarify some of that. And I think moving forward, it's it's a great place to be for us. You know, we're ha we have a bunch of irons in the fire stuff that hasn't come out yet that we're working on that I think is going to be stuff we're going to want to keep doing for sure. Yeah. Because, you know, anything we can do to bring the industry together is something that I want to be a part of. Yeah. Yeah. The other the other thing I wanted to touch on, you, you brought it up a moment ago, is 
the lifeblood of this industry has always been retail and indie retail in particular man they got hit so hard with that direct shot uh debacle and as they're kind of limping across the finish line from that they get hit with this and it's yeah. it's devastating what, what kinds of things can can we do as an industry to help indie retail Well, you know, I think we've been brainstorming about that a lot. And I, I sometimes think that um, serendipity happens when you're not even looking for it. Um, I recently got an email from a friend with a design company who's looking to help people out uh, for, for free. You know, uh, she has a bunch of designers who are out of work. She wants to keep them busy. Um, so she said is, you know, she wrote me an email and she said, is there anything we can do? And I said, oh my God, you know how many record stores there are right now whose owners just never created a, an interface for the web, you know, and, and their yeah. only option is to sell, is to sell it live. And I, so I connected those people and it's, it, that's the kind of thing where I'm like, you know, that this could be like, we're talking about in the long term changes you know, anybody who runs a record store that hadn't created a record, an online record store um, for whatever reason, and there's perfectly legit reasons for not doing that. This is, this is going to force them to have this other income stream, this other way of, of selling, which in the long run is probably going to be very helpful, you know, because it's not going to take away sales from, you know, the in-store experience is a completely different experience. Everybody you know, who loves going into a record shop, loves it for that reason. But you should also be able to sell online if someone can't go into the stores. It's just yeah. adding another layer. So it's like if we can, you know, hook those people up to get websites made during this time and they don't have to pay for it, it's not an expense, but it just adds to their ability to make money. You know, that's a really, that's really important. The industry, I think, just needs, as a whole, just needs to keep on it, you know, keep making sure, you know, we're going to have a lot more waves of stimulus money coming from the government. I mean, there's, given the way this is going, there's no way that that was, you know, that's it, what we got last Friday or Monday or whatever, right. you know, there's going to be four and five and six more waves. We need to keep those people at the forefront of that conversation so we make sure that they do get the money that they need to and stay I think, open. I think it's important to remind people the government isn't the only source of funding and grants. Um, Facebook mm -hmm. has what I think a hundred million dollar grant program that you can apply mm -hmm. for. So, and, exactly. and a lot of people are not aware of a lot of these secondary sources and you just need to keep your ear to the ground and pay attention because there are, you know, other options as well. Yeah. Yep. And go to yeah. musicbiz.org because we have all those options compiled Ex in one place. So people can find Exactly. Find like you stuff. said, you may not have paid employees, so you can't apply for the PPP, but you can apply for a Facebook grant and, you know, don't know what the requirements are ultimately going to be when they judge people to give it out, but... You know, you got to try for everything at this point because it is right now it's survival. And that that's that, you know, I, I sort of joke with everybody I talk to. It's like, well, how are you doing today? Ah, surviving day by day. That's it. That's yeah. all you can, you can do um, because we can't plan. We really can't plan for six months from now because we just don't have any clue what it's going to look like. Um, yeah. But saying that as as we start seeing states opening up some businesses, um, when it comes to the independent retailers, are you having discussions about how they can safely open it up? Because let's be honest, you know, it's a browsing. You go in and you flip through and touch everything, uh, you know, but you can't expect a, a an indie record store to go down and sanitize every vinyl album that comes in and is touched you know are you giving thought and discussions to how a retailer can open up be safe for their employees and be safe for the customers yeah i think um 
I know that those conversations are happening. We have a, a committee at Music Biz called the Physical Business of Coalition Heads and Record Store Day and several other people in that retail space, and they're totally talking about that exact issue. You know, I think um, the bigger issue for all of us, you know, that touches the whole industry is this sort of consumer confidence issue. You know, I think even if, I mean, apparently the state of Tennessee reopened today uh, where I live, but, um, you know, I'm not going anywhere. <laughs> and I think that's, that's the thing, you know, most of us, most people yeah. are not going to feel comfortable going into a situation um, that where you're in close contact with other people uh, for quite some time until we have some yeah. different measures in place, some safeguards, you know, maybe not even until there's a vaccine. And as we all know, that could take, you know, a year, 18 months, two years, we don't know. So um, I think, you know, I think this is going to hit us hard and I think it's going to be a couple years before the whole industry gets sort of back to what was normal. Yeah. Um, and, and that's scary, but it's also, you know, yeah. it's an opportunity, right. For us to figure out how to, how to do what we do and what we need to do in this way where we're that's looking right. at each other like yep. this. And, you know, you started Jay by saying one of the best things about music biz is the conversations you have in the hallway with people or on the elevator or on the escalator or, you know, getting a sandwich That's and, right. you know, until it's safe to do that, you know, there's an argument that we're not going to be able to, you know, like if that's the best part, we're not actually going to be able to provide that for people for a little while. Yeah, you know? well, that leads so me to my to next question because that. That, that's a perfect segue. This last week, I saw this presentation by this new company, um, some folks that I had worked with before, and they, they are putting together um, virtual expos. Like, so think of Comic-Con, but it's it's online. You go to the booths, you go see the premieres, you see the actors do the roundtables, all of that. I would be shocked if, you, if I asked you if you had considered some of those types of options and you said you hadn't considered them. I mean, are you guys kind of looking at those things and just not that it's where you want to go, but, you know, what do you think? Oh, yeah. Definitely. I mean, we're looking at all the options, right? We're looking at everything. I attended a, a, a conference this weekend, this week, that was a virtual conference yeah. um, just to see how it would work, you know, see how, how technically it would work. Um, how was it? There are a lot of, I'm sorry. How was it? Was it, did it work? I liked it. Yeah, yeah it did work. It was interesting. It was nice because they let everybody have video and audio. So um, most people just muted themselves when they were in the actual panel situation, but it was nice to see everyone's faces. So there were like 30 people on your screen and that was nice. <laughs> you know, it had yeah. gave you that feeling like, Oh, we're actually all together somewhere. Um, so yeah, I mean, we're, of course, we're looking at all the options. Um, but you know, that getting back to what we just said, you know, yeah. there's, there's nothing that really that, matches actually meeting it face to face and and having yeah. those human connections that's right so you, you know, know one, we'll one, see. One, one of the things that that i've noticed because i run in a lot of fan communities is the fans don't really know what's going on i think all of the attention from the fan standpoint has been put on tours are canceled Tours have canceled, shows aren't happening, but they don't really understand what's going on with releasing product, why are releases being delayed, what's the excuse. You know, they don't understand some of the dynamics that were going on behind the scenes. And then there's also some that just don't understand. It's, they're like, well, I'm going to the shows when they start coming up. You know, I know my band's going to start touring soon. And I'm like, but it's not up to the band. You know, they. I think the consumers are getting a lot of misinformation or just zero information, not even wrong. They just don't know that, you know, as we've been hearing, like what the, the mayor of Los Angeles said, he's not going to have any large gathering events in 2021. It's not up to you as the consumer to decide if you're going. It's up to the city and the state but then it's up to the promoter and the band. 
Gene Simmons has said, KISS isn't going to go resume their tour until there's a vaccine. So you've got to, you know, I think there's, and I'm not saying this in a sense that it's for, for music biz to do the education, but I see that that's, that's a lot of potential stress that's going on out there, especially for bands when they're dealing with their fans who don't understand what's going on and why is this changing and it's not our control. You know, when Live Nation pulls the plug on every tour, it doesn't matter whether the band wanted to keep touring. The plug was pulled on them. Is there a question in there? Wait, Did I don't know if there was really a question. Did a I freeze up? Uh, uh, you know, just a, a comment of of how this time is is extremely challenging for the for for retailers and for artists that that you know the the consumers just don't understand why I can't go back, why can't a record store right. just open up if if the barber shop's allowed to open, why can't the record store be allowed to open? Right. Well, and I, you know, I started my podcast, The Future of What, six years ago, partially for the purpose of educating, trying to educate people about what, how the music industry works. Um, and that's, you know, it's, it's a hard thing. You know, it's the music industry, I think we have a specifically difficult task because we're not um, plumbing, right? Like right. The, the, the plumbing in here, eating industry you know it's not very sexy and and as as such it doesn't have a mystique right so if somebody doesn't know why a toilet doesn't work they'll go online and look it up right they'll be like i, I could probably figure out how to fix this like especially if i can't call a plumber um yeah. but the but the music industry has a mystique right like just like the movie industry and as a result, I feel like most people have, they're not that interested in digging in to see how the sausage is made. They don't really want to know the average Joe. Like they, they say do, but I don't actually think they really do because I think that would tarnish the mystique a little bit. You know, I think people just want to believe that music it comes from geniuses who, you know, make it in their room and then put it into the world. And it's this fabulous thing. I think because, you know, as soon as you start talking about record labels and publishing and, you know, PROs, Dis people are just like, and retailers, you know, shoot me now. glass over. <laughs> exactly. Supply chain, you know, nobody wants to hear about direct shot because it's a supply chain problem. You know, people in the industry think it's really interesting. That's but right. But people outside the industry are like, what are you guys talking about? Why can't you just ship some records? Like, yeah. what's so hard? I gave you my money. Why so can't know. you mail it I to me? I think it's like a philosophical problem, Michael. Yeah, right. no, no, you're 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 right. you're, you're probably right. It's just uh, you know, in these challenging times where 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 artists and musicians have so much to worry about right now of just literally again surviving till tomorrow, it doesn't help that they've got fans going. Why aren't you releasing your album? Why did it get delayed? Well, do you want me to explain to you that you know the distributors and the and the one stops are closed, so there's nobody to pick, pack, and ship, and that Amazon isn't taking new releases in, and you know it it as you said, it takes away the mystique. All of a sudden, it's like, wow, this is really kind of not sexy. Exactly, and no, people don't want to know that. I don't think I really don't. No. No, I had an old boss who told me one time that uh, if you're explaining, you're losing, you know. So if you have to go into those kinds of details, you probably you probably lost them. So, Portia, you've got hopefully in August, this is going to be your first music biz that you've been at the helm. You've been at music biz. You've been at NARM. Are, are you nervous? Are you excited? Are, are you ready? I'm excited, you know, but I want to do it right. So, you know, it, August is, is right now what we have on the calendar, but if yeah. it's not safe and if it's, you know, people aren't traveling, mm -hmm. I, I doubt that that'll happen. I mean, you know, if I wanted to feel sorry for myself, I could be like, wow, this is an amazing first year on the job. <laughs> <laughs> like, can't even, can't even yeah. do it. Wow. But instead, you know, I'm just looking at it as an opportunity for us to, to do a pivot and serve our membership in a different way, you know, and, and show that music biz is a lot more than just a conference. 
Yeah. And, and you're so much more simple. engaged right now. I mean, just with all these resources and all these communications, you know, these webinars and uh, podcasts and live streams, it's almost, it sounds weird to say, but you're actually connecting more now than if you would have just had a normal here, we're going to drop the conference in May and yeah. I hope you're right. I, I would like that to be the case, you know, because that's what we want to be is we want to be an organization that makes our members feel like connected and engaged for 12 months, not just, you know, one conference. Yeah. Yeah. That's the plan. Yeah. And stay tuned on Monday. We're going to have a big announcement uh, because not this coming week, but the week after would have been the original dates for Music Biz 2020. So that's May 11 through 14. So we're going to do some special stuff during those days. Oh, that's super oh, cool. cool. Well, we'll watch for it. Yeah. Well, I'm, I'm yeah. going to continue to watch really closely. You know, one of the things, just, just to compliment you and your team, the communication between your team and the industry is spectacular because, you know, even an independent consultant like myself, I can reach out and they immediately call back. We talk on the phone. It's, it's pretty impressive. And, you know, I'm, I've tried to get involved with sharing some resources for, for your pages and everything. Everybody in the industry has a voice. And I think that's really important for a, a trade group or an organization like that. And I would encourage people to check out the website for all of these things. And especially some of these, um, I don't know what you call them, just live streams that you're doing. Like I mentioned, the one that's coming up on data that I'm really looking forward to. There's something for everybody in there. It's, it's pretty cool what you guys are doing. Thanks so much. I completely agree. My team is amazing. I got, I really inherited a great group of people. So I, I'm the luckiest girl. <laughs> that could have gone the other way, Portia. <laughs> oh, true. Yes. <laughs> so if people want to learn more about the Music Business Association, they want to learn more about, you know, participating, being a part of it, wh where do you recommend they go? Just go to musicbiz.org. It's all there. You can watch the Music Biz Lives on, on our website. You can look at our old webinars. We opened up the webinars forever. The webinars were only for members, but we've right. in this COVID time, we've opened that up so everyone That's can, super cool. can That's awesome. participate and, and check them out um, because there's some great stuff on those webinars. You have some really interesting information. Yeah. And thank you for all the work you're doing on the mental health so, front. That's in, very near and dear to joining. our hearts. Oh, sorry. Right. We, we yeah. the delay there. We were talking over each other. Go, you go ahead. Oh, I was just saying. Um, I can't remember what I was saying. It doesn't matter. <laughs> <laughs> okay, I was I was just complimenting you on your initiatives with mental health because that's really near and dear to Michael and I. And you know, we we're working on our own kind of initiative here, and we've had guests on and. Um, kudos to you for that because now more than ever that's that's super important um, and then and then finally is where can people follow you where can people reach out to you um, online or do you allow people to do that oh yeah I'm at dr. pork chop <laughs> <laughs> oh. <laughs> love that so uh, yeah at dr pork chop that's me so uh yeah you can find me on twitter and i even <laughs> have so i'm bad at it <laughs> um so yeah I'm, I'm out there and check out the podcast the future of what where Love we get it. podcasts uh, yeah. right now we've been broadcasting the music lives at the audio from those as as the podcast but we'll, we'll be getting back to a more regular podcasting schedule pretty soon and if you ever do any merch, you know, with Dr. Pork Chop, I want, I want one of those shirts, <laughs> please. Well, think about that for the conference. There you go. All right. Dr. Pork Portia, Chop. thank you so Portia, much for joining us. Yes, thank you. Thank you. It's Thanks greatly you appreciated Thanks for, doing for taking that. the time. Discmakers.com. Use code FREEBIZ for ground shipping on CD orders of 100 units or more, $150 value. Always fun having somebody from the Music Biz Association on. Um, it's also great to see how much they're doing right now to deal with this crisis that everybody's yeah. in, how yeah. they've just it, kind of quickly pivoted to, this is what we're focusing on right now. Yeah, I think it's really great. And, you know, I, initially I felt sorry for Portia, like taking over as a president of the Music Business Association and then boom, this hits and the conference has moved. 
I quickly learned by, you know, I spoke to her on the phone and I've been watching what they've been doing on the site. She's, you know, there's no reason to feel sorry for her at all. She's kicking ass and taking names. She's going out and putting together resources. She's making things on their site that used to be kind of behind the wall of only members could use and now everybody right. can get to it. And there's so many resources on there, like go to their COVID-19 uh, page that they have there. There's so many great resources, like she mentioned, you know, JAXTA is free. Um, and there's all sorts of other ways that they can help you navigate the maze of getting uh, funding. And it's it's really incredible to see all the work that they're doing over yeah, there. Yeah, yeah, good, good, good for them. Uh, yeah. And it'll, it'll be exciting to see. Um, how the the conference in august materializes or if it goes online yeah. um i i would personally i would love to see every conference when we come out of this be a hybrid i would too live and online yeah, because I would too. because you know i i've always said this that some of these conferences are incredible resources for artists but artists don't have the pocketbook they can't pay Fly for a plane, hotel. to stay at a hotel in Nashville, then to pay your your admission fee. All of that adds up, so they don't go. Well, yeah. if you can have a reduced fee because it's you're looking at the online version of it, you're saving money on hotels and airfare and food and all that, all those other costs. That I agree. You know, a, a, a hybrid would be awesome for all of it these. It would because you get more participation globally if you know if everybody could participate that way yeah i mean grant, grant, granted maybe the only people who can ask questions of the panel are the ones that are there in person that's your benefit of being there but everybody else can take notes and learn and you don't get the goodie bag if you don't get the yeah but in. let's let's be honest jay how many shows do you go to where the goodie bag is left in the garbage can in the hotel room when you leave uh, yeah, sometimes you, music business is usually pretty good. The reason I bring it up is we're sponsoring the bag this year, so so oh, so, so, hold, so hold your so comments make, till the end. Make 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 <laughs> make sure you bring Jay's goodie bag. Thank back. you so much. Go to the conference, get the bag. All right, thank you. Um, yeah, so it 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 will be. This is a great resource, and and it, it's definitely something everybody should be checking out. If nothing yeah. for. Go there and see the list of all the places you can go to get grants and loans and funds and all that other yeah. stuff. Yeah, absolutely. Um, all right. So just a real quick shout out. Thank you to Bruce and everybody at HypeBot, thank fans you. in town, and Disc Makers. We appreciate so much all of your support. And, of course, if you're watching us on YouTube, hit that little red subscribe button. If you're on Spotify listening to us, uh, hit the follow button. And on iTunes, subscribe and leave a review and a rating. It all means so much to us. And uh, that's it. We'll see everybody next week.